بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم So hadith scientists are very active. People don't realize the hard work the scholars of hadith have put in, in grading and classifying hadith. Hadith are not just judged with sahih and daif. There's a lot more to it. Um, I don't have time to get in depth, but I'll give you guys a playlist on the Majdari Bad channel. It's called the Science of Hadith, Jay Reading Hadith Medi. The one thing I'll just explain, for a hadith to be considered sahih, you know, which is authentic, there are five conditions. Yeah? So for a hadith to be considered sahih, it has to meet a minimum five conditions. Okay? One of them, the chain has to be connected. Right? It's called ittisal or sanad. So that means from the Prophet ﷺ, till when it's written, there can be no breaks in the chain. For example, look at the Bible. There is no chain connecting Jesus or disciples to where the manuscripts were written. Not anonymous authors. But that would never be acceptable in hadith. Meaning each narrator, who was it that heard from each one, we have to know who they are. The chain has to have no breaks. It has a break, even if we don't know who the narrator is. If we have a name, but we don't know, that's called Majhul, that's a weak narrator. Then, each narrator has to have solid or good memory. So this is something that makes Hadith sciences unique. Because in history, we don't check that. Like we talk about Alexander or Julius Caesar. Even if we look at the first-hand reporters, we don't check their memory. Then, you have to have good moral character. Right? Which is called Ad. So, again, Western historians, even if you look in the scientific industry, when we do a clinical trial, the people that are involved, we don't check their moral character. We don't care if they're drunks or liars or gamblers. We don't check if, they're, if they lie regularly. But hadith, we check. Anybody that was even accused of lying, that would be a fabricator. Even an accusation would not make it matru. If it's established that they ever lied, they would become wudu'a. So the hadith judging is so accurate, but that's not it. Chain is connected, good memory, good moral character, then we have to make sure there's no contradictions. If there is something stronger that contradicts it, it's called shal. Then we don't accept it as sahih. So if there is a hadith that mentions something or an ayah in the Quran and then a hadith comes something contradictory to it, it could never be sahih. There is, this is again, this is a very deep research to done to make sure that we have a fold, what's protected. On top of that, on top of that, there can be no textual defects. Meaning that if there is a grammatical error, if there is a, a, a word that's been flipped, that could never be sahih. So, Imam Bukhari and Muslim have even more, right? To reach mutawatir, that's even more difficult. But even the base sahih hadith has to go to these five conditions at minimum. So if there is ever a chain with a break, it could not be sahih. Most history we have today doesn't have a connected chain. So that means even if you took most of the history you believe in, it would not reach the level of Sahih. Everybody has to have a good memory. Even they're very good people, but they made mistakes, they flipped words, maybe they had some uh, dementia at the time of their age, we cannot accept their hadith. Everybody has a good moral character. Moral character for them, not just lying. Even if you didn't make Salah in the Masjid, even if you ate with your left hand, they would take you out of being not reliable in hadith. Cannot be contradicted. People say any contradict the Quran, it cannot be. It's one of the preconditions. And if there is any grammatical, even if a word is slipped, a letter is slipped, then it would be considered to be weak. Now, if this criterion is met, whether that supports your political views or not, whether that supports your madhab, your fiqh views or not, you have to accept it. And if these are not met, you have to reject it, even if it supports your point. And that's why, when we were discussing earlier, people's biases cannot affect hadith. Because the science is neutral. So if you look at the scholars of hadith, it doesn't matter what madhab they are. Imam Bukhari, for example, Abu Dawood being Hanbali, Ibn Hajar al Dhabi being Shafi'i, Tahawi being Hanafi, Ibn al being Maliki, never affected their hadith. 
their fiqh is this. Why? Because in hadith we have a science that does not allow biases to play a place. You will have hadith that are pro Amaliyya and pro Abbasiyya in the same book. The Rafa they will take what they like, but not the Ahlul Sunnah. We have a criterion that goes through. This is a brief introduction, inshallah, to uh, a science that I love. Inshallah, you can follow up on more.